Thanks for joining us today. It's really uh, very exciting, a lot of fun, very encouraging as we see uh, people joining us each week. Matter of fact, each week we, we made new friends and we appreciate that. We're excited about the new website and also the new YouTube channel that allows people to go back and to visit some of the previous programs that we've done. And so I think you're going to enjoy um, additional articles that we're going to show and additional videos that will soon be posted. The opportunity for a free book, well, Mark will come at the end of the program and tell you how you can get a, a free copy of the booklet on the End Times. And so look forward to uh, having you respond again with questions or comments. We appreciate that. Today we want to look at one of the most unusual uh, stories I think that's in the Bible. And one of the reasons I think it's fun to study this and and you need to look at it is because it involves archaeology, it involves current events, it involves something that's very controversial, it involves the Bible, and, uh, and it shows the, uh, I'm going to say, the incredible situation and significance of what's taking place right now in Israel and around the world. And so I hope you'll stay tuned with us as we look at the ashes of the red heifer or Israel's red heifer. And the primary story is found in Numbers, Numbers chapter 19. And you might say, that's a very unusual place to go for a story. Well, listen to this. 19, verse 1, The Lord spoke unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord hath commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring their red heifer without spot, for it is no blemish, but upon which never came a yoke. And you shall give it unto Eliezer the priest, that he may bring it forth outside the camp, and one shall slay before his face. Eliezer the priest shall take of its blood with his finger, Sprinkle its blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. One shall burn the heifer in his sight, its skin, its flesh, its blood, with its dung shall he burn. And then it talks about how that the priest will come. Verse 9, a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, lay them up outside the camp in a clean place, and shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water separation. It is a purification for sin. And so, what a story. And... And maybe you're asking, like many people do, when I begin to talk about the ashes of the red heifer, they say, how in the world would you ever come to a story like this and use it to show a picture of Christ? Well, first of all, you should know that in the Old Testament, there are many, many pictures of Christ. And they, they point to Christ. They take something in the Old Testament, and they point to, to Christ in the New Testament. And it's to me, it's interesting, because you see in the book of Numbers, now, don't be discouraged by the book of Numbers. You all know already that I like math and I like Numbers, so the book of Numbers is one of my favorite books in all the Bible. But in the book of Numbers, there's only two numberings, one at the beginning and one at the end. And sometime we'll, we'll talk about the significance of those two numbers and, and why they're only different by a few people. But in that book of Numbers, and I call the book sometimes the book of wanderings, because it talks about their wandering to the wilderness, or I talk about the book of murmurings because they murmured all the way through. But another way I describe it, it's the book of pictures. And in the book of Numbers, there are some incredible pictures of Christ. Matter of fact, I know you're going to be familiar with some because it's interesting to me that in the book of Numbers, chapter 20, here's the story of how Moses got water out of a rock. Remember, Israel needed water, and they got water out of a rock. And we find both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament that rock refers to Christ, how that he would be the living water. Or there's another one in, in uh, Numbers chapter 21. It's the story of the brazen serpent. And I'll tell you how important this one is. In John chapter 3, when Jesus talks to Nicodemus, he mentions that he would be lifted up on the cross like the serpent was lifted up with Moses. And so another one is in Numbers chapter 19. And it's the story of the ashes of the red heifer. So there are three incredible pictures of Christ, all in the book of Murmurings, or the book of Numbers, and they all have significance as we come to the New Testament as well. Now, if you were to go to Israel, you'd find that here's some very important things that are taking place. And among those things have to do with the ritual cleanliness. Ritual cleanliness was important to Israel, not only when they were in the wilderness, but as well throughout their whole society, their whole history, ritual cleanliness has been a, a very important factor. And so here are ancient pictures of, of mikvahs or baths, and here are modern pictures of them. Here's what it says in Hebrews chapter 9. 
notice we've gone now from the book of Numbers in the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews are Jews. It's, it's written to people that have been converted from, from Judaism to Christianity. And in Hebrews chapter 9, I actually want to begin reading in verse 11. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having attained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You see, this story in Hebrews picks up from Numbers 19. Now, let's just take a moment because you see what we find in the Old Testament, there was an old covenant. And this old covenant had laws and it had sacrifices and it had priests. And when you come to the New Testament, here's what you'll find. That those old sacrifices have been replaced by the New Covenant. Jesus came and when he came, he fulfilled, he replaced all the covenants that were old. He issued a new covenant and that new covenant related to the fact that he died on the cross for our sins. And all these sacrifices of the Old Testament were pictures of the Redeemer, the Messiah, the Savior that would come in a future time. How about you, my friend? Are you really ready if Jesus were to come today? You see, as we look at these things, can you imagine at a time when the sacrifices would be so important, when the enemies of Israel would be on the border, when the deserts would be blooming, when the whole world is in, is in panic, when the whole world is, has pestilence and, and, and earthquakes and all the signs are taking place. These are signs for the tribulation. My friend, in order to be ready, you need to be ready now. Jesus can come in any minute. I say that again for two groups of people. Number one, I think there are people that are walking and you watching and you believe the Bible is true. You even believe that Jesus died. And as you look at the program today, you say, wow. What a fulfillment Jesus was. He was the, the water that came out of the rock. He was the, the one lifted up on the cross. And he was the perfect sacrifice, the red heifer that would be sacrificed outside the city so those of us that are sinners could walk into the presence of God. My friend, not facts that save. It's a person that saves. It's Jesus that saves. Has there ever been a time that you admitted to God, I'm a sinner. I don't deserve your your grace and your goodness, but I come to you and I accept as payment for my sin the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He was the brazen serpent for me. He was the water out of the rock and he is the red heifer that makes it possible for my sins to be transferred to him. I accept Jesus as my savior. My friend, that's the only way to be ready for the rapture. And then if you know Christ, I want to talk to you today because you know what? I think Jesus is coming very soon. I think some of us are in neutral. Some of us are, are more worried about our physical health than we are our spiritual health. I think some of us are so immune and been lulled to sleep by all this taking place in the world that we forget that, that God says there's going to be a time, just like with the ark, I'm going to shut the door. And my friend, time is short to tell others about Christ. Would you share the gospel? Would you share Jesus with others today? Would you look at your life and say, are there things that I need to get rid of so that I'd be ready if Christ comes today? So he would say about me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thank you for joining us today. Father God, we come to you. And again, we thank you for just another great indicator that we're living in the last days. And Father, I've got to admit, I, I like the archaeology and I, I like the, the traditions of the, of the Jewish people as they sacrifice. But Father, most of all, I like the fact that my sins have been taken away by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Father, I pray today there will be some that will come to Christ and receive him today as their personal Savior. I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Free book. Yes, that's right, a free book. Just email us at the address shown at the bottom of your screen at BibleTipNow at gmail.com. And that email address stands for Bible Truth and Prophecy and the word now for current events. This book that Dr. Lindstedt has put together has some of his most recent slides that show great indicators that we're living in the end times. As I said, just email us at this address, BibleTipNow at gmail.com. Did you know we have a new website? 
Seriously, check this thing out. There's a link included in the comments section of this video. You can get the latest content from Dr. Linstead's messages and his previous messages about Bible truth and prophecy and current events. We will be linking news articles on our news page that we think are interesting, looking at the news through biblical glasses as it were. There you can donate to support our missions, and let me tell you, they are many. Schools in many countries, including Lebanon, Myanmar or Burma, Guatemala, China, and the United States, just to name a few. Witnessing both in person and via our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and this new website. We aim to break these messages down into smaller clips that are very easy to share in your daily witness. Another way you can support our missions is through our online store. Many items from around the world, Ahava lotions from Israel, olive wood carvings from Bethlehem itself, jewelry from Jerusalem, scarves and hats from the Holy Land, even jade from Myanmar. Each purchase goes to help us spread the Word of God around the world. Please subscribe to our website, YouTube channel, and Facebook page today. Join us in the work that the Lord has laid before us. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless.